Hi, this is Gail with Beta Jewelry Diva, and today we are going to make some cones. So these are the jewelry cones that you have at the uh, ends of your projects. So we'll learn how to make these because you can't always find them when you want them and the sizes you want them um, with the metals that you want. So it's always useful to know how to make your own. So I'll teach you how to do this today. And before we get started, I'd like to say if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the supplies. Here's what we need for this. You will need a knitting needle. I am using a US size 10 and a half, which is a six and a half millimeter. Do not use a good knitting needle for this. Get yourself an inexpensive pair because you will end up messing up the ends on this. So knitting needle, you'll need a pair of pliers. I'm using nylon jaw pliers because I think that um, they actually work the best, especially for the finishing at the end, but you can use any kind of pliers you'd like. You are going to need wire. I'm using copper wire today in 18 gauge. 18 gauge is probably about the best to use for this. Uh, you could use 16 gauge. That also gives you a, a, a nice end cone, but it's more difficult to work, obviously, because it's thicker. You are going to need a sanding block or file or something of this sort. I just get these from like the drug stores and the nail supply section and you know, they're cheap <laughs> and I use them up, but I use this instead of a steel file because I think it's uh, easier to use. <laughs> All right, you will need a flush cutter. So just get a flush cutter that can handle your 18 or 16 gauge wire and you are going to need some blue painter's tape. You don't have to use painter's tape. Uh, you could use masking tape if you like, but I like the painter's tape um, because of the, the surface of it. I, I think it... Um, does real well for that. All right, so now that we know what our supplies are, let's go ahead and get started. For demonstration purposes on camera, I am using 20 gauge wire, but normally when I do this for real, I use 18 gauge. Now what I've got is my knitting needle and I've put a little bit of blue painter's tape at the very end and I've made it into a nice cone and then just cut off the excess. Now the reason I'm doing this is because these knitting needles are very slippery and in order for you to get a good grip on the wire it really helps to um, have something securing it. I like to use uh, tool magic. That's actually my favorite way of doing it but uh, I was out of tool magic. Oops. So what I'm doing is I'm first doing a couple of anchor this is just anchor wraps and if I didn't say it I got about a foot or so of the copper wire. So now that I've anchored it I'm going to slowly and deliberately wrap. As I wrap I'm going to make sure that my coils sit one on top of each other and there's no big spaces in between them. And in, in some ways it's easier to actually do this with 18 gauge because you get less spring back. But like I said, for demonstration purposes on camera, my grip is better with the 20 gauge. You can also do it this way. You can also just wrap around. The one thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're wrapping tightly, that your coils aren't spreading apart. If you see that they're starting to spread apart, you're just going to, you know, unwrap it just a little bit and then push it back together, you know, rewrap. And the whole point of these, um, and something that I feel about jewelry in general when we're, when we're doing all of our jewelry projects, you know, we're not trying to look like something is machine made. That's not the point. The point is to have your jewelry look handmade or handcrafted and not homemade, if you catch the drift between the two. You want it to be professional looking, but you don't want it to um, look like it came out of a factory. And you don't want it to look like, you know, it's just, you know, sloppy and whatever. All right. So I've got about to the end. I've still got a bunch of wire left over. Um, for this one, I made it kind of short. So I've got it off. 
And then what I'm going to do is take my cutters and um, I am using the um, the flush cut end to cut this off, but in reality it almost doesn't matter because of what we're going to do next. But cut as neatly as possible. And then when it comes here, sometimes you just have to make two cuts or um, two clips, depending on how much excess wire you have at the bottom. All right, so I've got this cone now, and we're just about finished. What I'm going to do is put this back on, because I want to stabilize this. Now here's where these pliers will come in handy. Um, you can use regular pliers. Um, I just happen to like using these. And what I'm going to do is just squish it together a little bit more. And the nylon jaws are great because they aren't going to mar your work. All right, so I've got it about where I want it, but of course we've got this little burr end. And one thing I always don't like about end caps is a lot of times they seem to be kind of, let's see if we can get this, kind of lopsided almost. And I want to get rid of that lopsidedness. So I've got this down. At the very end, I'm going to take my little sanding block and, as you can see, get a cheap one. <laughs> and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, rub it across. So what I'm doing is two things. I am taking off that burr, which drives me crazy. I don't want to have any burrs near my skin. And I'm also kind of leveling it off some. So it's going to be a lot more flat. And you can use the various sides of it. I generally use the, the heavier grit side first. And then when I've got it just about to where I want to do, I go ahead and flip to one of the finer sides. And I used to use metal files and everything for this, but to tell the truth, this works really well. Just get some inexpensive ones. You don't need a, a real expensive buffing block. All right, so the top is pretty good. It's uh, pretty nice against my skin. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and do a little bit more in there like I could. Put this back in a little bit to open it up just a tad. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, other side. I'm going to uh, pretty much do the same thing. Oops, wrong side. So I'll do that a little bit more until I've got it all nice and uh, smoothed out. And then if I need to, I'll go ahead and hit this with a polishing cloth. But uh, here are a couple of examples that are made with the 18 gauge wire. So you can see that these are, are nice. And the one thing that you want to do it to make sh to uh, just check and see that they're about the same length. They don't have to be exact, but they should be pretty similar. So that's it. That is making some cone end caps for your jewelry project. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you don't already do so. This is Gail signing out, ha saying have yourself a great day. Bye!